Hello race fans, welcome back to another week of Daily Fantasy NASCAR. I'm Chris Terrell and I'm here for DailyFantasySportsRankings.com and RotorPros.com to bring you my top picks, just kind of going over my cheat sheet for the Big Machine Vodka 400 at the Brickyard. So first a little bit of news, uh, practices were rained out this weekend so they're going to be going without practice. Qualifying was also rained out so the field is set by owner points. Um, so keep that in mind that it's a little bit more of a wild card this weekend because we've got no practice times to go off of and qualifying set by owner points. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you, walk you through the cheat sheet. It's been a few weeks since I've done a video for NASCAR. So over on DFSR.com, um, you can go to the other tab here and you will find my preview article there. It comes out on Wednesday or Thursday. And once you get into that article, uh, you can read through, I kind of go over through some uh, track trends, stuff like that. Uh, pre-qualifying picks and right at the top you can click the free cheat sheet link here as well as at the bottom of the article you can also click uh, the sheet here as well as this DFS had NASCAR cheat sheet link there as well. Um, I've also got down in the visitor comments here a, a link to the Xfinity sheet for this week. I will be updating that. It was rained out as well. No practice and qualifying set by owner points there as well. So keep that in mind this week for NASCAR. So when you click on that, uh, over at rotorpros.com, if you go there, you go up to member content, go to articles. All the articles are free right now with the site relaunch. You can click on my article here, and once you get into that article, um, you can scroll down and rate kind of in the start here. Before I get into my picks, you can click on the DFS NASCAR cheat sheet. So... What we're going to do here is uh, once you click on that link and open the sheet, what you're going to want to do is go up to File, make a copy, name it whatever you want here, click OK, and once you do that, it's going to open up a editable sheet um, if you're wanting to sort any columns or uh, possibly you know change the model around a little bit to give you a bit different ranks here on the on the far right side. And uh, what you can do once you open it up, say you're just playing FanDuel only, you want to sort uh, by FanDuel, you're going to click anywhere in that column F in the FanDuel pricing, data, sort Z day highest to lowest, and it's now sorted by FanDuel pricing. So the first thing I do when I'm researching every week is I'll go look at some current track history, which here the only race here once a year, so uh, the last two races is the last two years, one per year. You got all the data there, got career track history, you got track type, which this week we've only got Pocono and Indy that are the two tracks that fall within that two and a half mile um, tracks that do not use restrictor plates. So I'm not weighing that whatsoever because those tracks raced completely different. Uh, we've got current form, last six races. We've got uh, DraftKings and FanDuel average in those last six races. We've got season form with DraftKings and FanDuel average. I've got the qualifying here in purple. Normally we would see practice times top... Um, 10 lap averages there as well and then over here in the orange section this is the model so this is the ranks of all those all those uh, stats categories that we talked about we've got track history um, this is all stuff that you can edit so this is where I've put my weight this week these numbers here in the orange they add up to a hundred this is the weight um, of those and then this is the rank of those weights so you can go and change these numbers up here uh, to whatever you feel is more important. So this week I've got 30% on track history, which is average finish last two years. I've got DraftKings uh, scoring the last two years in 20%. I've got career track history at 10%, qualifying at 15%, and form at 25%. So for this week, just going back and looking at uh, this tab here, last six races at Indianapolis, um, you can see all the results here, FanDuel and DraftKings scoring. If you scroll to the bottom, I've got some stuff here, drivers that had positive place differential, how many drivers had double-digit place differential, um, how many drivers had double-digit fast laps, how many drivers had 20 laps led, 50 laps led, and 100 laps led. So looking at that data, if you read through the articles, you'll see that there's only been one year, uh, 2016, where Kyle Busch led over 100 laps, 149. He started from the pole at 149 laps of the 160. Actually, that year came out to 170 laps. Um, that is the only year out of the last six, and I only look at six on my cheat sheet. That's the only year where a driver's led over 100 laps, and there has been no years in the last six where two drivers have led 50 or more laps. So fi finishing position is going to be a little bit more important this week than dominator points, and there's also some place differential just with those owner points. We'll talk about that in a minute, but you can look at all that data for the last six years here. Um, and kind of ride with that uh, re research as well. 
So going back to the cheat sheet now, um, I do have my top targets here. I list them here. I'm going to talk about each and every one of those drivers here. Um, so first up is Kyle Busch. He's starting from the pole, first in owner points. And what I like about him, starting from the pole, he's going to have a good chance at leading a bunch of laps. And if it was not for a crash late in the race last year with Martin Trax Jr., uh, he probably would have won three in a row. Because if you go over here, as you can see, he won the 2016 race, led 149 laps from the pole. He started ninth in 2015. Only led 19 laps, but he came up front and won the race. So he's won two of the last three races here. Probably could have won the race last year because him and Truex were on the front row. So definitely like him as my top dominator this week if you're looking to go for a dominator. Second, Kevin Harvick. Uh, he's actually first overall in the model. He's been very good here as well. He has finished top 10 in four straight here. Sixth, sixth, third, and eighth. Um, so he's been fairly consistent here. Um, doesn't have the wins. Uh, we'll go over and look at uh, career track history. As you can see, he's got one win, but it's been a while since he's had that win. But he's finished top 10 in 11 out of 17 races here. So uh, definitely looking at him and Kyle Busch to be battling each other um, pretty much the whole race, and especially near the end. They are being this the last race before the playoffs. Um, the, the regular season championships is in balance. Kyle Busch is currently leading in points over Kevin Harvick, and that's pretty big because... Uh, the, the winner of the regular season is going to get 15 playoff points, which can come in huge come the playoffs. So I think they're going to be battling hard um, come near the end of the race. I'm going to try and do whatever I can to fit two of them together in the race, and there is some nice values that we'll get into. For GPP pivot in the top tier and top tier, I categorize, I'm going to sort this by DraftKings, is 9K and up. Um, so I'm looking at Chase Elliott. He has not been very good here. Looking at his races, he's finished 18th, 15th, and he got in a, had engine trouble last year, finished 39th. So he's never got a top 10 here, so I think people may be fading him, uh, especially to be looking at track history this week with no practice times. He's starting 11th, so if he does get his first top 10, they get that car figured out, I really think that uh, they definitely can. He will be a uh, give us a little bit of place differential and some lower ownership because, um, I mean, drivers like Brad Kozlowski, Danny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, I think they're going to be a little bit higher owned. So I think it definitely makes sense there this week. Next up, we're going to jump into the mid-range. And on DraftKings, stands out. He's third in my model. Joey Logano at 8600 He just seems underpriced this week. He, I wrote him up in my articles. Um, he's been very good here. He's finished top 10 in five straight races here with three top fives there as well. Um, he started in top five this week. He's coming off some, some nice form. He finished second. Uh, Runner-up last week, I think he's got four or five straight top tens as well. So he's coming in with some nice form there. And at 8,600, I think he's a play in all formats, especially um, if you're playing cash this week. He's fourth most expensive on FanDuel. I still think he can fit him in, but I'd rather pay up a little bit and go with Harvick or Bush myself this week. So next up, i got got uh, Ryan Newman going down the board a little bit at 7,200 on DraftKings, $9,000 on FanDuel. He's starting 17th. Um, he has excellent track history here as well. He's finished a, a 12th or better in six of the last seven races here. He won here in 2013. He finished third here last year. So he's got some nice track history as well, and he's very cheap. So I think you can use him as that uh, mid-tier guy in all formats as well. GPP formats, I like going Daniel Suarez in the number 19 car. He impressed here last year in his first trip to Indy. Uh, he started 15th, finished 7th. He's going to be starting 20th this week. So uh, just put that all together. I think he makes a nice value. But with that small sample size, I'm definitely uh, reserving him to GPP only this week. But he comes in a nice value, and you can pair him and Newman together in GPPs to help you get up to the Harvick and Bush. So dipping down into the lower range now, uh, three drivers that I'm looking at. I'm going to start with Chris Busher. He's top 10 in my overall model, as you can see. He started in 23rd this week. He's only raced here twice. He started 22nd in 2016, finished 14th, fin started 26th last year, finished 9th. So he knows how to race this track, um, really good on the flat tracks, uh, good here, and starting 23rd. Even if he gets a 15th place finish this year, top 15 there, I think that's enough place differential, enough points to pay off that $6,500 price tag, 67 on FanDuel. Also looking at Ty Dillon. Uh, right below him. He's 21st in my overall model. He's starting 30th this week, and that's kind of what stands out to me. He's only raced here once, so it's another small sample size. I'd lean to Busher in cash games, uh, probably Ty Dillon and GPPs in that same price range. 
Uh, he started 28th last year and came in 19th. So if he can get another top 20 finish, even a top 25, I think that's enough to pay off his price. 6300 on DraftKings, 6000 on FanDuel. And finally, if you're looking to punt this week, especially if you're trying to fit Harvick and Kyle Busch, uh, probably only going to be able to do that on FanDuel, possibly on DraftKings. I haven't built too many lineups yet today. But Castle is starting 34th in the 0-0 car. Um, he's got some nice track history, although he has been in different cars, the 34 and the 38 the last two years. But he finished 22nd and 20th, 26th the year before in the number 40 car, um, and 30th in the 40 car the year before that. So even if he can sneak into the top 30th in that 28th to 30th range, I think that's enough to pay off his uh, mid-5K price tag as well. So that takes care of my uh, top nine picks, three in each uh, salary range here this week. If you have any questions um, about any drivers I didn't talk about, any track history, anything about the sheet whatsoever, you can definitely hit me up uh, for Roto Pros. You can come over, if you're a member, jump into the Roto Pros Slack chat. I will be there leading up to the start of the race tomorrow. And rain is in the forecast. They're hoping to start it. Um, it might be delayed later in the day or even into Monday. The Xfinity race has moved to Monday as well. But uh, definitely hit me up in the Slack chat. I'm going to be there pretty much all day tomorrow, NFL day one. So I'm going to be around all day if you have any questions there. Um, draft or sorry On DFSR, you can go down and you can go down to the visitor comments. Um, probably best where I'm going to be is in the member chat room as well. You can hit me up there. And both both sites here, uh, DFSR, we've got a three-day trial. And over at Roto Pros, we've got a two-week trial. Um, so you can get in there for free if you have some questions um, about lineups or anything for pretty much any sport um, that's on right now. MLB, NASCAR, uh, PGA, we've got a week off next week. And uh, NFL starting tomorrow, which is going to be the big one that takes over the chat room. And you can also hit me up on Twitter. Uh, you can jump over there, um, at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. And uh, you can hit me up there and ask any questions that you have. Definitely uh, do that. And uh, let's see some green screens this week. That's all I got for this week. Definitely hit like on the video. Subscribe to my channel. There's going to be more uh, videos coming. Subscribe to the Roto Pros channel. I'm going to have this video up on both of those. And uh, lots more videos to come. We do about four or five videos per week on the Roto Pros YouTube channel. So definitely hit us up. Thanks for watching and uh, good luck this week everyone.